All right, so today I will be giving a very, very basic tutorial on how to keep and convert uh, Crypto Korean Flamingo from its immersed form. So you can see that my tank has a lot of Crypto Flamingo and my tank is basically a farm tank right now. And um, all the Flamingo started off with a single pot that I bought in the immersed state. And um, you know, I heard a lot of things about people saying that it's a very, very difficult plant to convert and how hard it is to keep this plant. But to me, there are some very, very basic fundamentals that you should get right um, before you attempt to keep this plant. And uh, if you do get those fundamentals um, tweaked and sort of perfected, you would find that keeping this plant and um, any other plant would be would come very very easily um, so a little bit about my tank um, I am running the WRGB2 um, the red being at 100% the green at 55 and the blue at 80 so it's it's rather high power um, the lighting is rather strong uh, my CO2 is running about two to three bubbles per second and uh, for wall changes, I'm doing 50% per week um, with once a week, uh, every other day dosing of uh, Tropical Premium Nutrition, which is what you see in front of you. Um, I basically do one pump every other day. And for wall changes, I'm using tap water. Um, surprising as it may be, but tap water works for me. Um, and the anti-chlorine, I'm using Seachem Safe. Uh, just a little bit. Um, other than that, I do those, um, you know, Seachem Excel to get rid of algae. Um, but that is sort of a sp sporadic. Um, I don't do I don't dose that on a, you know, on, on a routinely basis. So that really depends on how bad the algae gets. Um, but if you can see my tank right now, it's it's rather good, right? It's rather clean. Um, you know, that that that's one thing that I think really really helps um, having a clean tank um, and also having everything consistent um, so wall changes are done weekly I never miss a week um, it's always 50% the fertilization dosing is, is, is consistent and uh, CO2 dosing is consistent as well and lighting of course I don't ever change it um, I run my lights for about eight hours uh, every day it's on the timer I don't really ramp it up it is just it goes on full power and it turns off at full power as well um, as it turns off from full power uh, if that makes any sense um, you know and and if you keep everything consistent uh, you really don't have to worry too much about this plant um, and I, I think this goes for not just the crypt flamingo uh, I think it applies for the for other sort of difficult to keep plants as well um, you can see the uh, Hagophilia sp chai in front of you, uh, in front of the Crypt Flamingo. It's a different shade of pink, very beautiful. Um, it does grow slower than the Crypt Flamingo, but um, I, I can keep it under the same parameters. Um, and I don't really go into too much focus on the KH, the GH, the pH and all that, um, because consistency is more important for me. Um, but I would say that do avoid the extremes. Um, you know, my tap water isn't really too crazy as far as water parameters go. It, it, it's rather soft. Um, it's on the softer side. Uh, I think the KH and GH range between 3 to 5. Um, but the pH is on the higher side, uh, about 7.4. Um, so that's that. But because I'm changing the water consistently, um, I think the Flamingo, once it adapts to your tank, um, it's smooth sailing from there. Um, I really didn't have to do much. Uh, the only really real thing that I do is the the, the wall changes, the uh, getting rid of the algae, um, the fertilizer dosing, um, and of course you got to propagate, right? <laughs> if you want to start up a, a farm tank like mine. But um, other than that, I didn't do any extra um, for the conversion part. I I basically the CO two I kept it the same as it is right now. It, it, I started off with two to three bubbles per second. Right now, I'm still running two to three bubbles per second, and the lighting setting as well. Um, I have heard people say that you know during the conversion process, you you should um, increase your CO two, perhaps you should increase your lighting and all that. But to me, 
I didn't have to and everything went really really smoothly um, the plant didn't melt at all and uh, I really didn't experience much problems um, but one thing to note is that this tank has been fairly mature um, it was running for about a year to two years before I bought the flamingo I can't really remember um, and uh, the, the tank went through various transitions before reaching this current state uh, basically I had it in a uh, it was still a farm tank but it was more like a like Dutch style farm tank where there were much much more plants um, so I didn't propagate the flamingo as much so it was a lot more cramped um, but it still did really really well um, but of course if you give it more space and you propagate them um, they can grow aggressively man just look at the amount I got um, and uh, yeah, I wish the SP Chai grew as fast and as, as wide as this, but uh, nope. Um, and, and you know, one, one thing to note is that perhaps it just so happens that the parameters that I'm able to provide are really, really good for them. Uh, it might be that case for me. Uh, maybe you would struggle with this plant if you are still doing the basics, right? Um, by the basics, I mean, you know, keeping everything consistent and making sure you have good lighting, good CO2, um, getting your temperature right. Um, as far as temperature goes, I am running... The tank is mostly under AC, um, air conditioning, but when it's not, I do have a fan, so the temperature sort of fluctuates between 24 to 27 degrees Celsius, uh, and that doesn't really affect this plant too much. Um, I would keep it on the lower side if you can, but if not, at least run a fan. Um, you know, during the summer or when, when it does get hot. Um, so, yeah, the filter, I am running a Oase Biomaster 350. Um, it's a little bit overkill. Um, I can't really run it at full power. I kind of have to run it at about eh, 60%. Um, so some wasted flow there, but uh, tons of biological filtration. I basically fill it up with biological media, so... <laughs> full on biological filtration man um, and the Oase Biomaster makes it very very easy to clean the uh, the filter um, because the, the pre-filter is uh, very easily removed um, so I, I, I do like it about that um, I'm not going to go in depth about that filter um, if you guys are interested I could make a video about it um, just let me know um, but yeah you know, the, the most important thing definitely is to keep things consistent and start off with good equipment I feel um, get a good light get a proper co2 system um, it's not too important whether or not you get the two liter co2 tank or the three liter um, the size of the tank doesn't really matter um, but just do get a good regulator uh, I am running the co2 art um, regulator Alright, here it is, as you guys can see, it's the CO2 art. Um, I don't have any uh, liquid in the bubble counter, so I can't really show you guys the bubbles, but um, yeah, running right about 30 psi, that's the sweet spot for me. And um, this is my second regulator actually. Um, the first one was a, um, I think, Up Aqua. Um, anybody in Asia would have heard of that brand, but it's, it's really, it's horrible. <laughs> I will switch it out. And uh, this regulator is great, honestly. Um, keeps the um, bubbles consistent and hasn't failed me so far. So, um, yeah, and here's the filter. Um, you see, this is what I use to control the flow. Um, the reason why I got that, um, I don't know what you call this, adapter, is because I don't really like to use this to control the flow. Um, I don't know. I find that if if you run the flow too low, means that you push this to the right a lot. Um, it might cause leakage. Uh, so that's something that I want to avoid. Um, and I don't really want to shift this too much uh, because this is plastic. So yeah, I'm not sure how durable it's gonna be, uh, especially long term. Um, for CO two, I am running the inline uh, diffuser. I think it's from Canvi. I'm not too sure, but uh, yep. Show you guys the lighting. Um, it is the WRGB2, and that's my fan. So, 
Um, in the tank, I do have Rotala Tulu. I do have some Buseps. Um, not too sure what species they are, but um, uh, yeah. The inflow and outflow. Uh, I do. I am running a surface skimmer. Does help to get rid of any surface gunk. So yeah, take a look at the SP Chai. Um, but yeah, uh, really, it, it, it's not a difficult plant to keep. Um, definitely, definitely avoid extremes. Um, I do have soil in here. Um, a decent amount, a little bit less than ideal, I feel. Uh, it's about an inch. Um, I would go up to two inches if possible, but I'm just... <laughs> I also don't like the tank having uh, too much soil, you know. Um, I don't like to see too much soil, it's just... Yeah, this is not a big tank, this is a 60p. So, I don't have much space anyways, and the Crip Flamingo is quite a big plant. Um, so, yeah, you can see some big ones in the middle, uh, some small ones up in the front. Um, very interesting when you see the pink roots. Um, so, yeah, but I had to deal with stack horn algae. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Um, I guess not. <laughs> but yeah, the tank is not com completely clean. Um, but I do have some shrimp to try and help out. Um, those are blue dream shrimp. You guys are wondering, or blue sapphire shrimp. Um, they actually calls. Um, and they help to get rid of algae. Uh, and one thing I, I do to sort of force them to eat algae is that I don't feed the tank a lot. Um, I only feed them once a week. Um, but I think it's sufficient, you know, the, the algae and the organic sort of keep them fed. Um, I don't have to do much other than that. Uh, and uh, they're still breeding, so I think that's a good sign. Um, and because I'm running the surface skimmer, um, some of them do get trapped in the filter, so I do have to empty out the filter every week. Uh, and because I'm doing that, I'm also cleaning the filter every week, so that definitely does help. Um, so keeping your tank clean, I, I think, is another factor um, of healthy plants, um, keeping the tank clean. Um, I would say a, a clean tank, um, as well as really good CO2 input and control uh, would be really really ideal for this plant and uh, a way to keep your CO2 levels ideal is you know like I said before having a you know consistent uh, CO2 dosing um, and that is done through a good quality CO2 regulator such as CO2 art not sponsored by the way um, so yeah, and, and another thing is temperature, you know, that's why you want to keep your temperatures on the lower side. Um, so 23 degrees, 24 degrees is, it is fine. Um, and um, strong light, strong light, I would say you do have to be careful um, because you got to find that balance between strong light and strong CO2. Um, if one of those is out of whack, then you'll probably get algae. Um, and if your tank has a lot of algae, then your plant will not do very, very well. So I keep my lighting strong and my CO2, I'm able to keep it at 2-3 bubbles per second. And that allows me to grow the plant um, quite quickly and um, get uh, healthy plants. Um, fertilizer isn't that important. Um, of course, you have to dose it, right? Um, but I would say root tabs are better um, for a plant like Crips. Um, I am dosing root tabs, I think Denelay ones. Um, I put them in every three months, so don't have to worry. And then um, I think because of that, I'm able to chill out a little bit on the fertilizer, uh, one pump every other day. Um, you know, it's fine. And <laughs> yeah, you know, just, just treat the flamingo like any other plant and I think you'll be fine. Um, don't be scared. Um, give it a try. You know, I do know that it is a it's quite intimidating. You know, with a price tag uh, <laughs> that comes with the flamingo. But um, you know, if, if you can keep the flamingo, you can move up to things like the SB Chai, which is a higher level pink in my opinion. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so 
Uh, you guys have any, have any other questions? Do let me know. Um, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys around.